Pokemon fan games. The art of taking a beloved IP and using it to create a brand new, but also similar experience. It's been my favorite genre of media for a while now, as it's been such a blast to interact with the ever-growing community and witness people's Pokemon Dream games come to life. But no matter how fun or exciting it may be to create these fan-made games, there will always be some that just get abandoned. Some of them had an official cease to their development, while others had their lead developer just completely vanish from the scene. So in this video, I'm going to be going over a couple of Pokemon fan games that were quote unquote abandoned, but I'm also going to be discussing why fan games end up this way as a whole, so be sure to stick around until the end. My name is Avery, and let's get started. The first fan game is probably going to be the most well-known one on this list. Released in 2018, Pokemon Phoenix Rising was one of the most ambitious fan games of its time. With its incredible graphics and an amazing list of features, literally every Pokemon YouTuber and player had their eyes on this game. The future of Phoenix Rising looked bright, as they had an incredibly talented development team and an ever-growing following. But, fast forward almost 6 years later, and Phoenix Rising as a fan game has been cancelled, with not a single gameplay update since its original release. So, what happened? I'm sure most of you who were interested in the project did read the cancellation statement, but in case you missed it, I'll briefly go over it. On April 14th of 2024, one of the Discord server staff announced the cease of development for the project as a Pokemon fan game, out of fear that it would be taken down by Nintendo. They then stated that the game would instead be developed into a standalone title that isn't attached to the Pokemon IP. Now I do have more to say about this, but I'm sure most of you want to know what the heck happened in that 6 year time gap. Let's go back to 2019, about a year after the game's first demo was released. It was around this time when a few of the game's original developers began to leave the project, which isn't as big of a red flag as many people think it is. Some developers were leaving, but a couple new ones were coming in. Of course, since some of these departing developers were the ones that originally began the project so many years ago, a lot of players began to feel anxious over how long it would be before another update was released. This would also be the last year anything was posted on the official Phoenix Rising Twitter account. Over the next few years, nothing big was really shared with the community, until around September of 2023, where we finally got an update on what was happening with the game. The original plan was to port the game to a newer version of the engine, and remake the first chapter. Of course, we all know what happened just months after that. Now, as I said before, this project was cancelled as a Pokemon fan game out of fear that Nintendo would shut it down. But... I have a feeling that there were more reasons than that. First of all, the chances of a non-profit fan project being shut down these days are close to none. The number of Pokemon fan games that have received the CND is less than 20, and the last time it actually happened was 8 years ago. And no, Relic Castle didn't get shut down, it received the DMCA takedown request, which is very different from a cease and desist. And they came back under a new name about two months later, with all of its original content well preserved. So if it wasn't out of fear of Nintendo, then what was it? Well, I have two theories. When Phoenix Rising first released, the quote-unquote best fan games at the time were projects like Insurgents and Uranium, which definitely aren't bad games, but do feel pretty dated compared to everything we have now. Phoenix Rising was supposed to be innovative, it was supposed to be different, and I think that's one of the problems the developers had trying to jump back into the game. It's difficult to feel motivated to constantly try to innovate with a project that has no financial return. Secondly, the developers probably also felt burnt out from dealing with all of the players. Now, I am not going to lie, Pokemon fan game and ROM hack players can sometimes be the most impatient people to deal with. When's the game going to be completed? When's the next update? What's the release date? Like, we don't know. 
We're unpaid developers trying to make a cool game that can't be prioritized over our other adult responsibilities. But I feel like I've been talking about Phoenix Rising for a bit too long now, so I'll end this segment wishing the developers good luck with whatever they're planning to turn this game into. So the next fan game I'm going to talk about I will have to present a bit differently, because despite having a huge history, this game doesn't actually have a public release. So bear with me in the limited gameplay footage I was able to acquire. Originally beginning development in around 2014, Pokemon Azurite was an ambitious fan game that would introduce a new region home to 150 new Pokemon and 5 new types. On top of all that, a new gimmick would be added that allowed any Pokemon to essentially Mega Evolve in combat. Just scrolling through their website filled with incredible artwork and lore would make anyone excited for this game. And with their enormous list of contributing developers, you would think the project was in good hands for an eventual release. But Azurite had one huge flaw in their development plan, a flaw that a normal player might not be able to see. The lead developer wanted the game to be released as a fully completed package. No demo. At all. You might be thinking, a lot of players prefer to play completed games anyways, so why waste any time on a demo? As a developer myself, let me break down why a demo is so important. If you've played my fan game, Vanguard, and happen to think highly of the story, regional variants, or maps, well, none of that would be there if I had just worked on the game for years without a demo and released it as a full package. But because I had multiple demos, I was able to gain feedback, constructive criticism, and even new developers. All of which both helped me improve as a developer, and the game as a whole. But the biggest positive I got out of releasing demos was motivation. Fan game developers aren't paid, so the best thing we get to keep us going is the joy we get out of watching so many different people play our game. So I'm sure you're wondering, is Azure an abandoned game? Well, not exactly, but from the way it looks, I wouldn't blame anyone for thinking so. First of all, the gap between official development updates has been pretty worrying, with the latest post being over a year old now. But the biggest knife in Azure's heart, which is probably the thing I should have started with, but oh well, was a 22 page long document written by a former artist detailing the game's state of development hell. Now, while I do think this is an important document, it does include a lot of pointing fingers at the lead developer. Of course, having read it, I can't blame the game's contributors for feeling this way, but my goal here isn't to put the blame on someone, but rather discuss the project itself. So I'll leave said document in the description if you're interested in reading it. At this point, I think there's only one thing that can save Azure and its community, and that's something playable. Whether it's a roughly thrown together demo, or the battle simulator the remaining developers teased, the fans need something. The years worth of assets that have been developed for the project should absolutely not go to waste. I really do hope that the game can one day be playable, but of course, only time will tell. So why do Pokemon fan games end up like this? Obviously, there are many other projects that either show off a bunch of stuff or release a single demo and just disappear. The biggest thing that I believe leads these projects to their almost immediate death is ambition. People coming together trying to make the next big thing, only to realize how much effort they'll have to sink into a project with zero financial return. Which makes complete sense, and obviously I don't blame Phoenix Rising for trying to turn their work into something original that they can eventually profit from. Speaking from my own experience, a better execution to fan game development would be to just start small, and over time, try to garner a larger development team while improving your own skills. Another issue I see with these big fan game projects is a lack of communication with their audience. People want more than just yearly development updates, or the occasional, oh, it's being worked on. Your players are just as excited as you are for the release of the game, 
and keeping them in the dark about what's been done so far will only drive them away. But if anything, I hope this video did at least enlighten any future or upcoming fan game developers on ways to better handle your project. If you want to see more video essays like this that take a deeper dive into Pokemon fan games and ROM packs as a whole, then be sure to subscribe. But that's all I have left to say. I hope you have a nice day, and goodbye.